When assessing the clarity in a diamond, the fewer impurities or inclusions that are trapped within the structure of the stone, the higher the grade of clarity. But do you need to worry about the different types of inclusion and does this affect the value and the appearance of the diamond? Identifying the exact mineral or impurity that has been trapped within the diamond billions of years ago is almost impossible. But by looking at the shape and the structure of the inclusion, specific names can be given to certain types. When you look at a diamond certificate, you'll often have a clarity characteristics line or an inclusion map with a key. This is telling you what the inclusions look like in your diamond and in the case of the inclusions map, where they are positioned within the stone. So this diamond has a few different types of inclusions. The first inclusion is called a crystal. Some crystals can resemble a diamond within a diamond and some can resemble bubbles. Some crystals can be so thick that they start to take on a darker and even a black appearance. The next inclusion is called a cloud. This is a very broad term as it means there's a collection of small inclusions close together. They can look though very different. If the diamond has a larger cloud, it may start to appear cloudy or hazy and this can have a significant effect on the appearance of the stone to the naked eye. Next, we have a feather. This is probably the easiest type of inclusion to identify and define. It's a crack or a fracture within the stone that has the appearance of a feather. These are caused by the immense pressure as a diamond's risen through the Earth's crust. Notice that they are nearly always white and they vary significantly in size and shape. Next is a needle inclusion. This is similar to the crystal inclusion, but as the name suggests, it's needle-like in shape. This type of inclusion is often white and it's actually very rarely visible to the naked eye. The final type of inclusion in this stone is called an indented natural. And this is where part of the skin of the rough diamond is left on the surface of the polished stone and that then intrudes into the diamond. Now, though strictly speaking, it's not an inclusion in the regular sense, it is counted as one as it does sort of break the natural surface of the stone. And when it doesn't break the surface, it's simply called a natural and it's not counted as inclusion. Now what's interesting is you could have an internally flawless diamond, but it was still had a natural marked on the inclusion map. Naturals are pretty much always on the girdle of the diamond. There are some other less common types of inclusion, such as twinning wisp. These are formed when a diamond stops growing and then starts growing again, maybe thousands of years later, but in a different direction. This change in grain leaves a mark in the stone, rather like the crown in your hair or a knot in a piece of wood. These inclusions are very common in heart-shaped stones, as the resultant twin stone is a very suitable shape for a heart-shaped diamond. When you're buying a diamond, it's important to look at the detail of the impurities within the stone so you know why your diamond has been given its particular grade of clarity. This is especially important when buying a diamond with a lower grade of clarity as it can sometimes significantly affect both the appearance and the price of the stone.